Orange Ledger with uh, Circuit Specialist. I'm the tech support engineer here. And what I want to do today is demonstrate some of the advanced triggering capabilities of the uh, Handtech DSO 5000 series oscilloscopes. Today I'm going to be using the DSO 5202, which is a 200 megahertz version of this scope. Uh, all of the 5000 series scopes though, do have this, uh, these advanced triggering functions. And today I'm going to be looking at one that I thought was uh, actually very useful and that is the video triggering um, capabilities of this unit. So I've got a um, CCD camera here that I'm using as a signal source to uh, present a composite video signal. Now these cameras are still used quite extensively in uh, surveillance systems so they're still uh, very popular and obviously uh, anybody that's doing service work may need to troubleshoot some of the different uh, problems that you may run into with these particular cameras. So what I'm looking at today is <coughs> on this Hantronics, uh, uh, the Hantech scope, is the ability to trigger on individual video lines, which I think is very useful for determining problems with either video uh, vertical sync or also with closed caption and some of the other uh, signals that are embedded into this waveform. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to look at the video sync and the individual line. So what I do is I set up my trigger me menu for triggering, uh, and I have six different options. I have edge, video, pulse, slope, um, alternate trigger, and other trigger. So I'm going to set up a video, which is the uh, you see the little dot hopefully in the uh, on the screen. Uh, channel one, since we're, that's where I have my video signal direct from the camera. It's a composite video signal into a 75 ohm terminator into the vertical input of the scope. Uh, I'm using inverted polarity because this particular camera has a vertical sync, uh, uh, horizontal sync and vertical sync as a negative point signal. Uh, notice the bottom line, if you can see this, I have the capability of all lines, line number, odd field, even field, all fields. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to use a line number. Notice the line number is displayed down here in the bottle, bottom of the scope and my line number control is up here on this VO knob. Uh, vertical sync signals always occur during the first uh, 20 lines of the, vertical, of the video signal. So I have the capability of adjusting all the way from uh, line 1 all the way to line 21. So uh, as you can see from this, the <coughs> vertical uh, uh, synchronization signal is very apparent and very obvious here, very easily uh, identified. So if I have trouble with my vertical sync in my either my receiver or in the camera, uh, I can look at that and make sure that my vertical sync is good coming out of the, uh, the camera. If I didn't have this capability, I would I'll just give you a demonstration of what it would look like on edge triggering. And it's pretty much just a, a blur. Uh, because it, the camera obviously is, in, uh, I mean the scope can't uh, separate out the individual video lines for this particular application. The other thing that, uh, one of the other options of this uh, scope besides the video triggering is the pulse triggering. And here I have the ability to select um, different pulse widths of signal. So since I know what my vertical signal is going to look like, I know my uh, horizontal sync pulse looks like. I'll be able to synchronize on a different pulse width. And we'll go ahead and set that triggering up. And so I can select either when it's equal to a certain pulse width, when it's not equal to a certain pulse width, when it's greater than a pulse width, or less than a pulse width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I don't like to use equal because it's too hard to get it exactly on. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and use greater than a certain pulse width. So I have the greater than sig uh, sign here selected. Um, the right now the pulse width is set at 17 microseconds. I'm going to move that down to like 4 because that's the uh, pulse width of the horizontal sync signal. Okay, so one of the other nice features or interesting features of this advanced triggering is the ability to trigger on uh, the width of a pulse. So that's useful for finding uh, data embedded in a uh, pulse stream, such as uh, serial data. In this particular instance, I'm going to go ahead and continue looking at this video signal. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this up for the, when the pulse width is equal to some particular value. Since I know from the uh, television theory that the horizontal sync pulse is about 4.85 microseconds wide, I can go ahead and adjust my pulse width so that I trigger on a pulse that's 4.85 microseconds wide. Now notice there's a little bit of leeway in here so I have uh, don't have to get it exactly on which makes uh, helps a lot. So here I have it set to 5 microseconds and notice my triggering stopped and that's uh, indicated by the waveform that's not, not moving. Every once in a while I'll catch one but pretty much it stopped. If I go back down to like anywhere from 4, we put it 4.5 so 4.7 to uh, all the way up to like 5, I get a, a nice trigger so I'm able to look at the uh, horizontal sync signal on this particular uh, video waveform. I can also expand it out and look at the uh, color burst signal on the back porch of that waveform if I want. These uh, advanced triggering features of uh, most digital scopes, especially this hand tech scope, uh, make troubleshooting a lot easier than it was in the old days of the analog scope. So it's an interesting feature, very useful, but not very well documented, I'm afraid, in the documentation. So hopefully this demo will uh, help to demonstrate some of the features and some of the applications for this particular uh, area of treatment. Thank you.